picked up a very clean 69 Chevelle with intentions of restoring and modifying this to become a giveaway vehicle. Like so many projects do, it escalated quickly and we are super proud now to bring you all the details of what we consider the ultimate Chevelle. Hey, we're here with our 69 Chevelle. Can't wait for you guys to see what we have in store with this car. Right now it's cold, but that's gonna be changing. So stay tuned and watch us as we go through the transformation. First step, break this thing down for paint. We're here at SV Auto Body and Paint, checking out some of their killer work on your guys' next giveaway car, the Chevelle. Uh, they brought it down to bare metal here. Um, car's looking really good. We're gonna shave some trim, but overall the body looks pretty good on this thing. I'm not seeing anything uh, of concern too much. Pretty rare to find all original car in this condition that you take it down to bare metal and you don't find a lot of patch panels. Um, this was an original San Diego car. Uh, had one repaint, so it shows. Um, we don't usually take them all down to bare metal, but this car is nice enough. So we wanted to do that for you guys. Um, but yeah, this car is looking really killer. There's gonna be a big surprise coming in for you guys in this area, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, you can see the only real thing I kind of noticed, we got a little bit of nose damage here, but uh, we'll figure out if we need to bodywork that or maybe just buy a replacement panel. Um, but that's it. Really impressed with uh, the guy's work here and the way the car's coming out. You know, it's, this is not a new car, this is an older car, so it's pretty rare to find them with such a clean body like this. But that's kind of why we wanted to show you guys. We're here at SV Body and Paint again, checking in on the Chevelle, your guys' uh, next RM build. Um, just do a quick walk around. They've been making some killer progress on it. Um, we got some of the stuff being shaved off of it. You can kind of see um, where the turn signal indicator is, some badging. Uh, we had some moldings down here that are getting shaved, going for more like the SS look um, without those. Shaved these as well, uh, just trying to clean it up for you guys. Um, just really focus on the body lines of this car, shave these emblems. Um, we're gonna be putting something real special in here. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but you can see how nice this car was to start with. I mean, as far as uh, these old cars go, I said it before, but this one was really clean. These are all original panels, not really any damage here. Uh, we had a little bit of a patch here that uh, they fix and body working now um, doing it right getting this thing down to bare metal for you guys um, doing it right this is going to be a really nice car um, we talk a lot about color changes and why we do it you can kind of see a little bit again the olympic gold is what this car was great color but we're going with something a little more modern because we are resto mods so we get to modify things um, even though the original color wasn't wasn't bad uh, we're going with something a little bit better something a little more modern um, that you guys will be happy with but we just wanted to check in we came here to just uh, show you guys some of the progress uh, and you guys get a little bit of hint of the direction we're going with this thing smoothing everything out uh, just getting it uh, a little cleaned up but real happy with the progress so far this car is nice so it's always nice to start with a good car and these guys are kicking ass we can't thank them enough uh, you can see here too they shave some of these uh, moldings that are normally there um, so yeah it's moving right along you see a little hint here we do have like some good parts under here nine inch suspension we'll talk more about that later but just wanted to check in with you guys show you some progress Get you guys excited. I know I'm excited. Can't wait to get this thing back. Start slamming it together. Start destroying some tires with this thing. So we're here looking at uh, some paint samples for the 69 Chevelle. This is obviously the whole trunk painted in a nice 
darker gray. Um, but we're comparing it to the paint swatch there that's actually a Porsche GT silver. Um, so decision time, we kind of brought it out. There's not much sun, but even in the clouds, you can get a better eye on the color and what it does, how it reflects light and uh, how it's going to look on camera. So, tough I decision. Silver. I like the silver. I think we should do the silver. The last time you guys saw us, we were looking at a darker gray. I think it was a Ferrari color actually spray out. Um, and Siggy actually went ahead and sprayed out the whole trunk in that color so we can really get an eye for it. Um, and we kind of went full circle back to a silver that we were thinking about originally, um, which is this, which is a Porsche GT silver. Um, and this is kind of what all, all of us thought would look really good on the car. And I think we are gonna end up going with this. Um, so you can see the car is all in primer. It's it's really close to being ready to spray. Uh, so next time you see us, we'll probably be giving you an update with maybe some color on this car. That should be happening soon. Um, but the car's looking great. Super happy with the progress and thanks for checking in. This is uh, the color we end up going with Chevelle. Uh, SV Auto Body is knocking it out of the park. They got these loose pieces, the doors, the trunk, the hood painted. Um, the color came out better than we thought. Um, kind of a it's actually a Porsche GT silver but it's got grayish tones to it and I think on the Chevelle this is gonna look killer I'm really digging how that hood looks that came out really good to me some of the curvature is like it catches the way the paint catches the light yeah it definitely like shades in and out of darker and lighter which is which is gonna be really good once we get it on the car but yeah, we got like some hard lines on the car. The car has some soft lines, so this will help accentuate all of that. And uh, you know, silver has a tendency to be kind of plain, but I think you guys will like it. We're going to dress it up with some nice wheel tire setup. The stance is going to be killer. Um, it's going to be a real classic vibe to it. Can't go wrong with this color. All right, and we'll get this back and then everything goes together. Yeah, yeah, so uh, they're gonna paint the main part of the car still, um, and then they'll, they'll bolt everything back up and align it for us. Um, and then it's time to drop the engine in and start sorting out the drivetrain and everything, and get this thing back on the road. We're here in the Restomods shop. We're working on the Chevelle engine. Uh, this bad thing right here, 427 angry cubic inches. And of course, keeping it boosted for you. Um, but what we're working on today a little bit is laying out. We got a nice new front accessory drive uh, for this area here. Uh, it's gonna change our pulley setup a little bit. We're going to an eight rib belt drive. Get a little more grip on that supercharger pulley. Um, changing the water pump, a few other little things. So I'll walk you guys over and show you what we're working with here. Um, basically wanted to, uh, just get something real nice for the front end of that engine. You're gonna see everything. So we have a Wegner front accessory drive that's all anodized black billet, uh, different water pump. You can see some of the different tensioners and pulleys. Um, real nice power steering pump. It's like a GM type two pump. Big amp alternator, blacked out AC compressor. This thing's gonna have AC for you guys, keep you cool when you're roasting tires all day um, and of course 3.225 pulley this should be uh, plenty good for letting the horsepower really sing in this thing ATI super dampener so really good parts um, that way this thing's nice and reliable even at that crazy power level that we're shooting for um, but we just wanted to give you guys a, a little peek at what we're working on so we're putting it together um, once we get all this stuff on the engine, it'll look really nice in there with this accessory drive. And then we'll move back to the bell housing area and start bolting on that Silver Sport transmission six speed. But we kind of laid everything out, just see what we got here and we'll get started bolting this stuff up. We are changing the harmonic balancer for our new accessory drive from Wegner. And we're gonna get one that's uh, gonna make our supercharger fully spin a little bit faster and make things a little more exciting more exciting always better more power always better and look at this thing yep 
put a nice big badge on it in case you didn't know what this unit was. It's beefy and it's awesome. Yup. Can't wait to get this thing in the Chevelle. So give us a status update. Where, where is everything on the Chevelle right now? So right now the car is getting finished soon at paint. Um, and we have a ton of parts here ready. I'm trying to get the engine all prepped so that when we get it back from paint, um, we can just drop it right in and then get right on the plumbing. We gotta revise the fuel system. Um, gotta add a little bit extra plumbing for the supercharger because it does have an intercooler. Um, and then it's just wrapping it all up, uh, exhaust, drive shaft, all the little stuff. Once it's back from paint, we'll be doing that. Put all the exterior trim, which we shaved a lot of it off, so that should go pretty quick. Um, and then, yeah, break in the clutch and burnouts. Can you go walk me through this pile of, of boxes you got over yeah, here? Yeah, we got a lot of goodies here. So, um, there's a little bit of everything, but it's all getting ready to go on the car. Um, we have some nice LED headlights from JW Speaker, really good brand, um, made in the USA. Some high quality stuff, that way upgrade all the lighting. Got a box of all new seals, that way this thing's gonna be sealed up real nice for you guys, whoever wins it. Um, this thing, Silver Sport Transmission, stepped it up big time with a Magnum 6 speed, so that'll be going on the back of it. Um, and then we got a lot of miscellaneous. POL, one of our sponsors, got this LS engine plate adapter kit for that. Um, SST also was nice enough to send like the whole kit. Basically there's um, a bell housing, the whole clutch setup, um, some sheet metal to uh, make the trans tunnel a little bit bigger. This trans is gonna be quite a bit bigger than the, the stock one. Um, so big shout out to SST. And then a bunch of stuff that we took off the car. Some of it will be going back on, some of it won't. Um, trim, bezels, things like that. Uh, some of the glass is wrapped up nicely here. Some of these A-pillars, we might uh, repaint these before we put them back on. Um, and then these were the original interior panels. And so Dynamat, we're gonna Dynamat the whole car for you guys. Uh, really nice wiper kit from Detroit Speed. Really trying to take care of all the details on this one, just make it all real nice, real nice. <laughs> up the Magnum 6 speed from Silver Sport Transmissions to our Supercharged LS engine from Blueprint um, and we're just going through the instructions they ask you to um, make sure you check the concentricity of your bell housing because there is adjustable dowel pins so they send some real detailed instructions on how to do that so we're gonna go through that make sure everything's nice and squared and perfect it's an easy step to skip but it's super crucial so make sure you do it. They also have a good YouTube video on how to do it if you're doing one in your car. Um, but uh, very important, so we're gonna go through that. That way we can get this trans bolted on. On the LS, um, we're gonna be attaching this dual disc clutch from Silver Sport. Uh, and then we're gonna do some measuring for the hydraulic throw out. Um, you see the diaphragm plate here. So we're gonna be bolting this thing together. Hopefully get the transmission mounted today. So stick with us and check it out.
a lot more professional than that. Um, we've got the 69 Chevelle back from body and paint. So we're really excited. You can see how good it's looking here. Um, this is that GT Silver we talked about. It came out killer on the car. This car um, has a lot more hard lines than a Porsche, which this car is, this color is originally from. So all these edges add a lot of really cool like shadow and dimension to the color. Came out a lot cooler than we expected. Um, and we're super excited to have it back in the shop and get cracking on it. Um, the color came out beautiful. I think you guys are really gonna like it. it looks real good in the sun too. Um, so. We're gonna keep cranking on this thing now that we got it back, start putting it together, do a ton of upgrades. take off the engine hoist and probably just look at it for a minute and just enjoy the fact that there's a 427 in our 6 inch wheel. Just observe the beauty. Yeah, just take it all in. You can see the engines installed here. This is the Blueprint 427 LS based engine with a Magnuson supercharger. Um, we got all the front accessory drive on. Beautiful black anodized stuff from Wegner Performance. Shout out to them. Super helpful um, when ordering the kit and the installation and everything. These guys are the experts. Um, you can see some of the details we got going on. Uh, we got a POL adjustable engine mount kit to drop this LS in there. It allows you to kind of slide the engine you know, back and forth. Um, ideally, we want to get it as close to the firewall as possible. So you can see we've got a little bit of space here. Um, that's about as close as we want to go. Um, ultimate headers. These are really trick headers uh, with that really cool flange on them. They're all ceramic coated stainless headers. Um, and what we're going to be working on today is the control system. So what you can see for the engine management system, this is what the engine comes with. This is all from a blueprint. It's a full like plug and play harness basically. Um, and this engine actually shipped to us already dynoed on this computer. So um, there's some good tuning in there. Um, but because we love our friends at Phytech and we work with them on almost every build, we've worked with them. Uh, pretty much anything we can put fuel injection on, we do it. Uh, this is resto mod, so we like better than new and fuel injection is the latest greatest technology. So why not? Why not put it on your guys' giveaway cars? Um, so what we're doing today is we're gonna be leaving some of this harness, um, but we're unplugging most of this one that the engine comes with from Blueprint, and we're gonna be installing a little Ultimate LS induction system. So as you can see, everything's included. 
a lot of cool parts. Um, I mean, even the computer just looks better. But it comes with all the wiring you need, your handheld, um, a bunch of stuff. These adapters in case you got to get oxygen sensors uh, onto your car. We already have uh, bungs in our headers for that. Um, but all the wiring and then really good instructions. And of course, if you get hung up on anything, Phytech's just a phone call away. So you definitely want to consult with the experts and check their social media. Um, they do a Tech Tuesday, which is really helpful. They go over a lot of this stuff. Um, so big shout out to Phytech. We're going to be installing the, that kit on the engine today um, and keep moving forward. We got a little bit of wiring, a little bit of plumbing, then we're gonna start putting our core support and then we'll put the front sheet metal back in once we're comfortable with uh, you know, not having to work around it. It's kind of nice right now. It's uh, off the car, so we have a lot of access. It made the engine install go a lot smoother, uh, which you can see um, in some of the other episodes. But we just wanted to talk real quick about wiring stuff, the stuff we're gonna use from Phytech. Um, we also have a really bitchin' fuel line kit from them that we're gonna install. So you'll see that going on. Um, we're using a Phytech tank with an in-tank pump um, and that will feed a force fuel, which is a really bitchin' unit from Phytech. Uh, you can see that thing. Look at how nice that looks with the anodized and everything. We'll be mounting this up front. Um, that way this thing doesn't run out of fuel. You get these higher horsepower units and they need a lot more gas to make a lot more power. So we're gonna make sure that happens with the force fuel um, and that'll be fed by an in-tank pump also from Phytech. So shout out to them for really dialing in our fuel system. Uh, that's what we're gonna be working on today. Get it all installed for you guys. And then uh, hopefully soon we'll be seeing the guys at Phytech up at the dyno, at the, their dyno in Riverside. So stay tuned for that too. painted that that's the best paint job i've ever seen on whatever that is <laughs> is it you yeah <laughs> oh, amazing. I'm, look at that Potatoes. no detail overlooked over. on the chevelle so we're trying to swap out as many of the old crusty bolts with these nice stainless buttons Ooh. straight these fanciness spared no expense no expense spared only the finest Resting How's that holding on right there? It's the floater. It's just hovering. <laughs> you should just leave it like that. I think it looks good. It'd be, it'd be pretty dope. Like half crazy Chevelle, half rat rod. What we're doing now is uh, getting ready to actually take it back to the body shop to get some of the front sheet metal installed. Um, they're gonna put the fenders and the hood back on and align everything for us, which is super nice. Uh, they had it all aligned before when they did all the body work, so they know how it goes back together. We got the core support back on, got that all cleaned and painted. Um, we've done a lot of little things. We completely cleaned and painted all the frame of this car, obviously set the engine in. Um, got the front accessory drive, started doing a little bit of plumbing. We're gonna try and hide this up in the fender wells. Um, and then we got the radiator back in. We still got some plumbing left to do obviously there, but once we get these fenders in and the inner fenders in, we can start mounting some stuff like the Phytech computer and fuse block. We got a water pump for the supercharger intercooler that we're gonna mount. Uh, and a couple other things, but we're gonna get the front sheet metal back on. Uh, we dynamited the floor here. You can see we had to cut part of the floor out to fit this uh, six speed, but we'll be creating a nice steel tunnel over that. And then a console is gonna go there. We got the car all dynamated, got a few parts back on, a few little trim items, such as the bumper and the taillights, nothing major. 
but the car is going to go back for a day or two get the front sheet metal installed and then come back to us so that we can start mounting a few other items get some more of this trim back on and then figure out what we're going to do for the interior Look what we got back here. Yes, sir. Woo wee! Got it back from SV Body and Paint again. They got the fenders and the hood on. And now we're really gonna get it, start working on this car. Oh yeah. Panels here. These are rear door panels that'll sit kind of uh, above. Okay. This is for the center console. And then this is uh, the hinge for the door. And then these, I think, are the panels for... Well, those are some hefty panels. Yeah, I think they're for back here. I think it's this piece. Right in here. Okay. the suede material get basically wrapped around and stretched around yes. that piece? Yes, what will happen will, whatever it is that we choose to do here, it'll be wrapped around here and then we're probably gonna drill some holes and put some clips on it before it gets upholstered so you can right. pop it in place like any standard. And, and then you don't have, it. yeah, and you don't see it. I'm surprised they don't have it, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of these are put in with uh, stainless steel screws too and that's kind of the look, but that's not what we're going for here, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's probably that floor right there, but uh, yeah. So it looks we like it's, door it looks like it's up to us to be to to cut the holes out. Which, but it looks like these, right? It, it's that, and if there's anything in the middle, the crank would be in the middle. Yeah, so the window door. crank so would go over here somewhere. And there's somewhere with the crank. So we okay. got to figure out where it goes, and that's one of the that's one of the. Um, yeah, see, there's not even a clue of where it goes there. So when we put them on, we're going to drill from the plastic. And right. then the, once once the plastic tells us where it's going to go, then we're going to put in all our clips, put it in, make sure everything is right where it's supposed to be, and then we do it. The power plastic. window switches, we can maybe do one the center console, just below the All the way across, it needs to be oh, installed as piece. well. Oh, okay, yeah, for uh, the window. Area. Yeah, they're, they're, they're the little, okay. well, you know okay. what I'm talking about, right? Uh, sometimes you can get those generic, and sometimes you can get them to fit exactly the right car, but you gotta, you gotta keep that in mind as well. Okay. Um, the, 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 the holes and all that, again, we gotta figure out where they're gonna go. Mm -hmm. And, um... Okay, cool. uh, this is just kind of like an overview. I wanted to give you these yeah. parts, let you look at the actual That's car. When it do. comes time to do these, do we just give you the door panels or everything, or do we give you the whole car? I don't need the car. When the time comes, I can come in here and I'll come in with my son Ricky who's He's been with me forever too. Uh, we can lay it all out and um, and make sure that everything works. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you're free to work in here if you. I was gonna to say if you, yeah. if you didn't mind us being here, I'm insured in the whole year. Yeah, so. you're totally free to work in here if that if that's the way you want to do it. We, yeah, and at first we've been used to like dropping them off at, at yeah. the grocery shops, yeah. but whatever you know, I'd rather have it here to be honest. So. Yeah, P cars, Ferraris, and that kind of stuff. Um, but what I really wanted to show you was the Alcantara. Uh, this is the real stuff. This is with the actual product Alcantara. Um, a lot of guys get away with this. This is the standard suede, which is a fraction of the cost. Okay. But this has a very distinct look to it. Mm -hmm. And um, give me an idea, just to, so we can talk about the difference in cost. If I oh. did a headliner in Alcantara versus this, what is it? What's the cost difference? Now, if you said ballpark. All right. So the Alcantara itself, we just did a little mini, believe it or not. It was two yards. And that was $98 a yard. Okay. So his bill is $200. But this is what he wanted. He said, I right. want to see this one here. And I tried to talk him into that. And he said, no. And again, he's an old customer. He wants what he wants. So, sure. so that's what he wanted to spend. And that's fine. 
On your car, you probably need four yards. So okay. you're gonna start off with about 400 bucks right off the bat, just on headliner material, not even right. the side pieces if you can get away with it. Because right. all the nap has to go the same way. Well, yeah, the side pieces, like the pillars. The and pillars everything. and things like the back panels and so all that So you're probably talking, stuff. what, five you're yards there? You're probably talking about 500 bucks. And then you're talking about the panels have to match. The and doors, then the right? panels have to match, yeah. So that's probably another two, right? Yes, because you're gonna need three? a couple yards. Yeah, you're gonna need a couple yards for the door panels for the inserts. Right, so maybe we're at 800 bucks. We're probably at 800 bucks. Just so the just the material, and then what if we did this? Just that to is, get an idea that is almost a throw-in, believe it or not. Oh, so it's almost free. <laughs> well, it's not. <laughs> this was 800 bucks. Compared, compared, to the, compared to this, <laughs> this is about $19 a yard. Okay, so we pay 100 huh. bucks here, and we yeah. pay 800 bucks Yeah, here. and that's what I mean by just it. material cost. Just material cost. I'm just thinking colors just real quick. I mean, just leaving aside the difference between those two right now. I'm thinking obviously we're going to do, uh, you know, the car is silver. The carpet's going to be black. Seats are going to be black. Right. Do we want to do this in like a gray to kind of offset that? I would because I think black is going to be too much. Yeah, if it's all black. If it's all black, there's, it just, there's, there's no creativity when you stick your head in there and look at it. It's just right. all black. No matter yeah. how nice it is, no, it's all black. Yeah, it just kind of all runs together. Yeah, so I'm thinking together. it's something like maybe... You know, something like this. Actually, I have a. Uh, Maybe a, this one. This one like a darker gray. It's not too black. It almost yeah. looks black to me though. If we're gonna go that dark, I would do something like this one. Yeah. And I'm also thinking, hey, let's just go really light and do something like this, which would really offset with the black. But then I also don't want the checkerboard white and black look, right? So maybe it's something yeah. here, or here, one of these three. But see how it has kind of a. Oh, I love the feel. Uh, feel uh, this, Joe. Kind of a. Uh, I don't oh know, wow! Like a, like a sparkle to it or something. Totally. So when you put it together, it, it's got a distinct look. Yeah. Because the end, the some end of the. Some people can. Some people don't care. Some people. When you're seeing the end of the fibers, it like almost changes color. It does. It yeah. does. That's an easy choice for us right there. Um, and then in terms of the actual uh, like the leather pieces, is there a lot of choices there? In material? There is a lot of choices in leather as well. See, these are different textures. Same thing. This is a little bit cheaper. This is uh, like three bucks, four bucks a square foot. They come in 50 foot heights. So it'd be this versus this. So you can just feel the difference in so this. So I think anything in here is 395. I can certainly check for you, but uh, it's not further than that. And they're 45 to 50 square feet, whatever the math works out to that. And these are about nine bucks a square foot. So three times as much. Yeah, they're a little more expensive, but boy, do they make them nice. Yeah, I mean, and that's the kind of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that you see at the, you know, the really high-end car shows and all that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of aircraft use this kind of stuff as well because it's inherently mm. uh, fire resistant, and it just makes up so nice. But it is, it is more expensive. And for those, we would just be doing. Um, we'd be wrapping the door panels. Yes, but they the do suck up a lot of height because it has this. All the curves? The monster curve that really needs to be in one piece if it's going to look like. You right. know what I mean? Yep. If you try and put seams in there, it yeah. looks like you tried to put seams in there and that it makes it kind of pointless to save leather. Right. So they are kind of wasteful on the leather side. But on these big monster pieces, they, they go like use, you know, so you can get two out of, a, oh, I don't know, 40, 45 square feet. And then you have a nice big chunk left over for, because there's going to be a thousand other things to do on here because you're going to have scenes going here yeah and that kind of thing so it's pretty usable so you, you yeah. even though it's a wasteful piece you cut out all your waste first and then you have these big monster chunks you, you can use for all like the that. other stuff all right rick thanks sir Sam, <laughs> on, i will talk to you soon what's up as far as it what's up what you doing we're about to put this throttle body on there five tech one and two millimeter <laughs> Is that what a car sounds like? <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, we got a 102 millimeter throttle body. We heard you guys were gonna be doing a supercharger on that, a Magnuson setup. So we gotta let the uh, engine breathe to get all that air into the engine. So we're gonna get you a 102 millimeter throttle body. This will flow plenty of air for all the horsepower that engine's gonna make. Not only that, we also got you all your fuel lines. We got a force fuel delivery system to boost that fuel pressure up for you to make sure you got constant fuel pressure to make that horsepower. And this is the stock one we're taking off. Yep. This is the one the engine came with. Um, 
good GM drive-by wire unit, but we're going over to drive-by cable on this for the Fitec engine management system. Gotcha. And is it usually a good thing to swap this out when we're doing like a whole Fitec like ECU and all that stuff? Yeah, with Fitec it's uh, required, I believe. Fitec guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's required for the, the Fitec LS. Gotcha. What the heck? Dude, what is that? I can't believe this. I broke a nail. Oh my god. He just got a Manny. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Sometimes He's got it's good it to have a tool technology. for any job. Yep. Yep. Good as new. Dang, dude. You could be an Instagram influencer. Show chicks how to cut their nails. Tell them too. <laughs> the rest of them here. <laughs> Got done wrapping up the install of our Fitec throttle body and their Ultimate LS standalone. A harness and computer so you can see we got a bunch of the stuff on the harness plugged in it's all nicely labeled so there's not really any way to mess it up um, but we got a few more things to plug in and then we're gonna mount the ECU and the fuse box it comes with um, and then we'll switch over and get started on putting in the force fuel system so we already have a in tank pump from Fitec in the tank and we'll plumb and route uh, their fuel line kit that we got up to the force fuel center and we're gonna figure out where we can mount that where it looks nice and clean um, and continue finishing off the fuel system from there. We are in the resto garage today doing some interior work on the 69 Chevelle. Rick is here and he's uh, currently getting the pieces from Fessler USA fitted into the car. Um, we might do some trimming on them, you know, anything that's necessary to get them to fit into the body here. And uh, pretty much just uh, getting started here, getting the pieces in, seeing what we need to modify, and we'll go from there. So enjoy. here and just go over everything that we got and make sure it's all gonna work and getting a better idea of how we're gonna set it all up awesome big job to festival usa as well they sent us all this stuff and we can't can't be uh, more thankful that they hooked us up and yeah some nice stuff be, ra be pretty radical to just leave the color like that huh? <laughs> yeah, <it sounds> like, <laughs> like they made them in the right colors i guess but yeah so these are armrests um, and I guess this is like a lot of their mounting system mm -hmm. for that. Okay. Um, and then these will be the door handles. Oh, okay. And it looks like they're like a cable pole type, so it switches over to that. Okay. So the only thing we're not sure of at this point is whether the windows are going to be electric or not. Correct. Yeah, I think that's what we're we're uh, still figuring out. Well, I think it's got such a modern look to it that I think it would be a shame if it cranks in there. It would. The The only problem I find with the power windows, and we could probably work on it with this car, but the cars that don't have door frames, um, it's real hard to get them to stop in the right spot because the power window motor has so much torque that they overwhelm the stock door stops. You know, oh, okay. the, the window stops are designed for when you're cranking it, you feel a little resistance and you lay off. But uh, we've had a couple cars well, you know, I, that are just frameless glass, yeah. and it's it, real hard to align the glass. If it's going to be a real pain in the butt, it can actually, uh, a nice set of chrome handles in the front and back can actually offset the look of uh, the, because that's going to be Alcantara. Everything that's wood okay. is going to be uh, is going to be plain Alcantara, okay, which I think would look cool next to a yeah, nice set sort of contrast. Of yeah, yeah, I think so. Otherwise, you have to make something bleeding or something because right. you have this big monster piece, which it's going to look nice. But yeah, yeah, if it has a little something, and, something. I, and, and I think the handles would actually be a good idea. Yeah, in that case, especially if it's going to be a pain in the ass. If you say no, we do it all the time. It's not that big a deal. Then then I would leave it alone. We, and we've we done it, it and we get it to work, but. Um, 
it's a lot of work to get them, them to to fit right every time where you feel comfortable where anyone sure. can just roll it up and down okay. um i mean they do have also we thought about even if we did do power windows they have the switches now that are integrated where it looks like the old crank um yes. but you just yeah. tap it like the know? radios yeah, yeah like the radios they kind of have that so that's, a, that's an idea too and i've also seen like if these door panels get too thick even if we do want to do the manual cranks they should sell the shaft extenders now so that if you know this door panel you know our shaft doesn't protrude far enough with this door panel we can put a little extender on there and that'll, okay that'll set us up okay. at the right height you don't happen to have the old door panels do you yeah yeah you they do. do oh yep. okay all right well that'll tell me where the uh the old crank is rather than yeah than having the... yeah we saved everything so i mean these okay are, i'm gonna take the front door panels with me the uh, body uh, pieces uh, here the body uh, panels uh, uh, to his out. shop and get Not them perfect. nice and fitted <laughs> uh with the leather and yeah. alcantara now the armrests i would love to see in leather because they're going to be right next to the alcantara um, yeah is that something i should talk to chris about or uh, uh yeah i think that's probably a good idea because it's also like kind of a wear point so yeah, yeah. leather might be a little bit better for it yeah i think so. and the contrast yeah that yeah. back and forth so contrast all of a sudden you always... got all kinds of contrast going you got the leather from here yeah and then you got your nice little comb i like that handles so yeah let's see. okay yeah, I think we'll definitely do leather for that. Yeah. So we're working on our 1969 Chevelle. We've gone through the power plant that's in this thing. We've done a full paint job on it. It's now this beautiful Porsche GT Silver. And we've been working on the interior. You've seen some of the segments we did with Rick from RJ's Upholstery. We've got a full custom interior going in here with panels from Fessler Automotive. So there'll be custom door panels, custom center console. Everything in here is going to look really tight. We're putting in a roll cage in here that you can see. A challenge we came across was what kind of seats are we gonna put in? And I think that's a hugely important part of any build, just because it's where you spend all your time. We did it a couple different ways. Um, we tried a couple different products and we put a couple things together. So let me show you some of the seats we looked at for this particular build. And I got Chris over here, our master mechanic, uh, who will be giving his opinion as well, who counts double from my opinion. So the first thing we did is we, uh, we actually had original seats um, that we had in this thing at the beginning, right? Do we want to pull those out too? Yeah. Oh, okay. These are them. So these were in the car when we got it. Really nice seat. We've actually used the same model in one of our previous giveaways, a 69 Camaro. Uh, that one was actually in leather. This one's black vinyl, uh, but really nice seat. Still has a classic look to it. Added bolstering, nice design uh, as far as the fabric, but we wanted something a little more modern, a little more sporty, uh, mostly just because the rest of the car is just evolved into such a, a really cool build that we figured let's throw the book at it let's get some seats that match that level of the car as well this right here is a seat that we bought off of ebay and this was just kind of like a backup plan so uh i was just looking around ebay saw these they were 460 bucks or something like pretty that pretty affordable for the pair with shipping for the pair yeah so super affordable and they look okay right um there's a little things in here there's some loose threads here and there the slot here for the harness is kind of a cheap plastic, so it's not ideal. It's got a tilt adjustment here, so you can adjust the tilt of the seat, and it goes near normal brackets, so you can slide it backwards and forwards. But, um, you know, I think it's okay. My first thought when I saw these, when, I, when they got unboxed, it's a lot of product for the money. I mean, you're, you're getting some pretty good stuff in here. The, obviously, the design is pretty high end as far as the diamond stitch. You see that in a lot of the more luxury cars. So that with the contrast stitching, it all looks pretty good. So right out of the box for the money, this isn't bad. It's got some support. Um, if you're on a budget, you, you can't go wrong with this. So uh, we talked about the eBay seats. Um, this is another pro car seat. We actually uh, ordered these from, uh, do we call them pro car? We call them Yeah, Scat. pro car by Scat. Pro car by Scat. We ordered these from pro car uh, uncovered um, because we were gonna cover them to match the car. And they sent us these electric blue ones, which are kind of interesting, um, but it actually is really cool for them to come covered because then we can take this off and match the pattern with whatever custom cover that we want to put onto it. But these are actually really similar um, seats. So they have the side bolstering, they have the adjustment right here. Instead of a handle, it's this crank that uh, takes, oh, I'm sorry, this yeah. is the lumbar. This is a nice lumbar adjuster for your, your lower back, you know, some some of the guys have been busting their hump all day. Sometimes that's a nice added feature for them. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it'll tilt back and forth as well. And obviously we would not put in electric blue, but we would cover this. 
One day when Rick from RJ's Upholstery came to visit us and show us some of the samples that he had uh, to put into the 69, uh, he had something else in his van, which was a carbon fiber back seat out of a Lamborghini. Yeah, pretty exotic. And I was just like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest seat <laughs> I've ever seen. I want one of these. And then he told yeah. me that they're $25,000 each something or something like that. outrageous, but I believe it. Yeah, something crazy. But they were all, you know, Lamborghini'd out and stuff, and they looked very, very cool. And so I said, well, who makes these seats? And it, they were made by Sparco. And so uh, from the same factory as makes these Lamborghini seats, you can order Sparco seats. And so that's what we uh, ended up doing. And we've got a set of Sparco seats right here. Yeah, let's pull that thing out. Get her up on the table here. Should we just start with the, the backside first? I mean, it's, yeah. it's so impressive. Oh, hello. So uh, this is the Sparco seat. And as you can see, it's a full carbon fiber back on the seat. Um, the slot for the harness is a little bit uh, just better done than, than the eBay seat. And just for full disclosure, these are not $400 for the pair. I think we were out of pocket with shipping, everything like that, $7,000 for a pair of these seats. So 3,500 bucks each with shipping is a little different than 400 and something for the pair. So again, depending on the budget for your build, you're gonna get a lot of bang for your buck over there. Uh, for us, we wanted to go with something that was just a little bit more high end. So things I like about this right away, the look of it. So as you look into this car, obviously the 69 is a no post car. And so you kind of get that angle where you can see the back of the seat. And so this part of the seat is a really cool look. I the think. details, even just on the back of the seat, are so nice. I mean, the, the Sparkle logo, all this, like you said, the pass through for the seat belts, really nicely finished with the hardware. Um, even the little pull tab for the recline forward mechanism, it's got a cover, it's all stitched. Carbon fiber is super cool, you can never beat that. Uh, but all the detail work is just really finished looking. It, it's definitely high end seat. And so this one has a, a crank for the tilt. So you can kind of get an idea for it there. And it's got a suede insert here for where you're actually sitting. It's got all of the bolstering in it. It's got the cool Sparco logo. It's got the offset stitching. To me, just looks like a much better put together seat, uh, front and back. Um, and then actually sitting in it, which I'm not gonna do on this table, um, is much more comfortable. So I'm not an expert on what goes into these seats, but there is obviously a difference in the material you're using to construct it, the foam, the material you use to cover it, right? Um, all that other stuff. And so, um, yeah, this is this is real leather. This is not uh, vinyl. Uh, the Alcantara is like a synthetic suede, basically, but this is going to be a lot more breathable when you're sitting in it. The real leather is going to hold up a lot better. The sides here are perforated, so that'll help breathe a little bit. Uh, but you can just see a lot of the detail work. The stitching is just a lot neater and tighter. The, the quality of materials, I mean, this, this seat even smells good, which is always nice. You just get a seat that smells good. Uh, the embroidered logo, you know, it's, it's real subtle, but the seat is really nice. So it, there's definitely a difference. All right, so that's it. I think we've decided on our seats. We yeah, got these. No doubt. These are nice, man. I'm, uh, I might stay in these all day. <laughs> uh, We're continuing work on the 69 Chevelle today. Um, give you a quick rundown on a few things we're going to be doing today. If you want to come check this out, we have mocked up this really awesome Ride Tech Tiger Cage, um, and it's all stainless. So we're just doing some light mock-up right now to make sure the rest of the components we're going to put in the interior fit around this. Um, and kind of where we're going to start with that is putting the seats in, making sure the door bars don't interfere with any of the seat adjustments or anything like that. Um, so you see we have some brackets kind of laid in here that we're probably gonna use uh, for our seat. Um, these will adapt to the stock floor pan and enable, uh, enable us to use sliders on the seats. Um, and we have the seat sitting over here. So you can see, we're, we're gonna be using these really, really awesome seats, but they did not come with any sliders. Uh, Sparco does provide sliders, but we have some brackets we wanna use. So we're probably gonna adapt these sliders to work with that. We just need to um, cut and weld a little bit and make some brackets. Uh, so that's what we'll be doing today.
here again today in the Resto Mods garage talking to you guys about our 69 Chevelle build, which as you can tell is missing a key component, which is the wheels. So a uh, big shout out and thank you to our friends over at American Racing. We've used their wheels on a ton of builds. Yeah, I can't even count, but that's our go-to brand for sure. Um, and I think at the time we ordered them, these were like a brand new wheel for American yeah. Racing. Yeah, VF546. It's a, a two-piece forged wheel. Um, so it's a, it's almost their top of the line wheel and they have such a good product that they, they kind of have something to fit every budget and every need. Um, so these being a forged wheel and a new design, we're super excited to get them on the car. Have you even seen these? I've never even seen these in person. There's literally still tape. None of us have seen yeah, these wheels. This I is think... like a real uh, authentic response yeah, yeah. to the unboxing here. Well, let's get to it. Let's yeah, see. let's do this. Let's see what we got here. So what size are these? The fronts are 18 by nine and a half and the back is... We got an 18 by 11 18 for the by back. 11. It's about as wide as we could fit Ooh. on uh, the stock wheel wells. These look oh, good. Oh man, I can already tell this is going to be good. It's a lot of chrome. I'm just going to say that right now. So you can see the staggered setup there. Quite a bit wider. The narrower wheel on the front. Um, and these things just look incredible. Check these out. So obviously the car we painted silver. Um, and uh, these chrome wheels are gonna match perfectly. It's gonna look insane. Can we mock one up on here, you think? Yeah, throw that front one up there and see how it looks. Whew, that's a tall ask. Let's give it a shot. There we go. Boom. Man, that looks good. And it cleared the brakes. Let me throw a quick lug nut on there so we can just visualize how that thing is. Yeah, I don't want to fall off. We're gonna get some nicer lug nuts, but this will help us kind of eyeball just how it's gonna look. Man, that's killer. Ooh, that looks good. Sweet. That thing looks so good. So you can kind of get an idea of how it'll look. Wow. Obviously, it's sitting a little low since it's up on the rack, but dude, that looks so good. I think we made the right choice. Yeah. Chevelle startup, what a beast, what a motor. I mean, it sounds amazing. How does it feel as far as the fruits of your labor? Uh, it feels great, it feels great, I'm stoked. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's I'm enlightening, like... really. <laughs> <laughs> um, big shout out to Blueprint Engines and Fitech EFI for hooking us up with this incredible setup. Um, and then also, of course, um, Silver Sport Transmissions. Yeah. Um, we're about to get all that linked up and uh, drive lines in and final bolt-ons and then good to go. Yeah, definitely. Big shout out to them uh, for the Magnum 6-speed. Uh, just a lot of cool parts on this car, so glad it's running and can't wait to get on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the 69 Chevelle, we're going to be doing the back seat. Um, this seat is actually the original seat frame and it was somewhat nicely upholstered but with all the new interior we got in, what we're going to need to do is narrow the seat frame. So you're going to be watching Junior doing some cutting and welding on it to narrow it and let me show you guys exactly why. Uh, we got these really cool Fessler fiberglass interior panels that are all uh, nicely uh, upholstered in leather from uh, Rick from RJ's Upholstery. But what it does is it actually, it goes inside the car a little bit wider than the stock panels. So now we're gonna narrow the rear seat to match and have that all upholstered to match. And <laughs> so let's just go doorless on this thing. <laughs> no doors? Um, Thanks. Boy. Well, I could certainly cut it down. See how the bottom's got... I mean, almost, it, yeah. It's almost an exaggerated lip. Yeah, the contour pops out there at the bottom. Yeah. So, so, just to touch back on this, I think if we cut this thing... Like plenty short. Here, I'm gonna close this real quick. Um, you know, because the crank throw will be like to there. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if we have this cut like here, basically. Yeah, we can make something kind of nice. So, give us then, clearance. And then follow, yeah. Yeah, maybe a it'll, it'll basically just be from here. And then, however far you wanna leave back here is fine. Well, we have to remember it all started with that back piece because the door won't close. Yeah. Yeah, because our crank throw is here. So, yeah, we could move it. Even if we cut just to here. here the crank throw is there. Right. So depending on the height we want it, we can go like that. Yeah. And then, well, and then, that's then it. Yeah, however it is that it gets cut, it's passenger. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be it. Right, hold it for a second. Yep. Let me get my chalk out. I can find it. You want to sit on the seamer? Come on, ah, you. What? You want to sit on the seamer? What do you mean? You're going to cut all this off. Oh, okay, okay. Just gone. Yeah. Yeah, because the handle throw is going to be mm -hmm. like that. Okay, yeah. So and then it just has to clear back here. Okay. Yeah. 
And this will this will tell me where it's going. Yeah, where it's going on both it. sides. Yeah, that way it clears the the cage. Everything around the cage. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Perfect. So that'll be that, and that'll be that, and this one will tell me everything for the other side as well. Okay. So. Okay. Right. All right. Well, that one takes care of that. This, this one. Uh, this one. I'm not worried about. I'm worried about the door knob. Yeah, that's, that's probably gonna be a bigger issue. I guess if you didn't have a cage, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. It's actually a cool look. I was really happy with them, but once we start cutting stuff down, then I'm afraid stuff like this isn't gonna, you know what I mean? Right, it's not gonna make sense. Either. No. <laughs> if this solves it though, I mean, it's, I know. It's easy. Because they did close, that's that's the that's the key part. Yeah. Well, that's something yeah. happened along it's the way. Maybe the seals too, so I don't think you have to slide you guys slide here. Do you have a way of doing that right now? Yeah, that one already just, has. Just sand that down right yeah, now. why don't you do that right now? We can do that right now. And just see if it. Yeah, and answer that right away. Because the carpet's already off this one, right? Right. And, do that. and if it works. adjustable coilovers. So these uh, coilovers were in the car. Uh, they were purchased originally. The car had a small block with aluminum heads. Um, now it's got a 427 LS, uh, also with aluminum heads, but also with a supercharger. So we put a bunch more weight in the front um, and the car settled down quite a bit. So what we're gonna do is adjust the ride height to get it back up and then drive the car and see if the spring rate is still appropriate or if we have to bump up to maybe like a 500. Um, QA1 spring. So we're going to adjust the height right now so that uh, we're not so slammed in the front and go from there. Cool. 
Oh, oh boy, I got it. Oh, too hard oh there. That's sound, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's not working. We only use this. It's gotta get this one. Look at that. Did you see that? No. Go ahead. It's turning into housing. Dude. Oh, yeah. It's Quick team meeting, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. Safety meeting, safety first. <laughs> Big, big upgrades here. So we are going to a double adjustable QA1 with a 500 uh, pound spring rate. Uh, these are the old ones that were in there. These were 450s and single adjustables. So now we have compression and rebound, which is really nice. It's really going to help uh, tuning in the ride quality of the front end. we got the thrust bearings that are optional that will make uh, adjustments on ride height a lot easier. Uh, so we're getting ready to just assemble these with uh, some anti-seize as per the instructions. And we're excited to throw them back in here, kind of be able to adjust the ride height a little better on this and have the correct spring rate. So, so what was the issue up here? Because we so what happened was uh, these were uh, actually in the car with a different engine. Uh, this car before it had a small block with aluminum heads. Um, so the spring rate was like pretty dialed for that setup. But with the supercharger um, and the extra cooling system, uh, we added some weight to the front end. Um, so we needed to upgrade the spring rate. And we figured while we were in there doing that, we'd upgrade to a double adjustable shock as well. So just better all around. So uh, this is another one of those things like, this car started out as one build and changed the engine. Yeah. Have, and that's been a snowball. Can you walk me through some of that? Yeah, so like like you said, uh, it snowballed. Like these were not bad parts. This is a good part, the single adjustable. Um, but when we needed to change the spring rate a little, and that's kind of what's been the theme through the whole car. When you want to upgrade something or um, match the power level of this new engine, uh, we just went full bore. So basically everything that we upgraded on it brakes, these coilovers, bunch of chassis stiffening stuff. It was just to be able to manage that power more safely in this old car. I think the old engine dynoed like 480 horsepower, which is no slouch. I mean, that's nothing to scoff at, but this thing is gonna be well north of 800. We're hoping like nine something horsepower. Um, so what goes along with that is just making everything behind it better, making it all survive. Now, this is one of the final adjustments before it goes off what's next correct yeah basically we're just doing this to get the ride height up a little bit um, because it was a little bit too low in the front so when we're gonna take it to the dyno next week we're hoping um, and we want to be able to test drive it after that breaking the clutch so you know things like that so we wanted to get that ride height up so our tires aren't rubbing anywhere um, so that's what we're taking this chance we got a little bit of time to upgrade this right now all right QA1 precision products Yeah. It's a nice dust. Like my yeah. puppets. It's working out so far. Hey, you're not supposed to touch computers. I know. Somebody get this thing out of here. source for the lights on the gauges um, and just getting ready to, to plug it all back in now put the gauges in. we had a set of gauges in here the stash has kind of gone in and out we had a set of gauges put it in and they weren't up to par 
Um, so we had a just another set of autometers, just a different style. Um, they were like kind of the classic pro comp gauges, and we put them in, and they looked good until we put this really nice steering wheel we have in, and then they didn't look good enough. So uh, we just upgraded same brand autometers. Um, so they fit right into this gauge cluster that we already had, but these just have a little classier look with the brush and the polished. I think it'll just fit the whole interior vibe a little better. Not to distract you, but can you give us a little walkthrough on where we're at? Because this car is like, I mean, obviously closer than it's ever been, but... Yeah, so um, the car runs and drives and everything. We're really just prepping all these final little things to take it up to Fitech to get a nice dyno tune on it. Um, and then we'll just be breaking in the clutch and driving it, but uh, the car's pretty far along, so final stages right here, just those last little bits. Now, I can see the dash over here is like completely out. There's some wires hanging around. Yep. What's what's this been like to put together like all this? Because there's a lot of modern technology. Is it more wiring? Is it less wiring? What do we got? Um, it's just a ton more wiring. There's computers running everything. Uh, the vintage air system is all different. Um, and we got electric fans and relays and supercharger cooling pumps and a stereo hidden in here. Um, so there's a ton more wiring than stock, uh, but uh, this thing did have a really nice harness already in it. So we were able to kind of uh, build off of that and uh, keep it from being like just a wiring disaster, which is common on these resto mods. You see so many additional parts that the car never came with. Um, and the original harness is just not meant to handle all that. Uh, so what we end up doing is just putting like a ton of extra relay banks on everything. Um, every component that we put in has its own relay center. Uh, we even have a big main battery relay uh, in the trunk. Um, so it's just a lot of extra stuff, but uh, it'll be nice at this power level. You need all that supporting stuff to keep the car cool and keep it running good. So Awesome. Can't wait to see this dash go in. And then uh, what, what comes after? Is there any touches other than we put in the dash, we get everything buttoned up, and then it's off to Fitech for a tune? Yeah, that's pretty much it. We're just putting the dash in. Um, everything else is buttoned up. This car's got a full exhaust now. It's got working uh, electric exhaust cutouts. Um, we need to uh, make a little modification to the door pole, and we'll put the door panel back on, and that's about it. We're down to the last little bits here. Alright guys, so we are here with our 69 Chevelle build. It is finally out in the wild, made its way out of the shop. And our first stop is our buddies here at Fitech because this car is running all Fitech fuel system. So they're gonna tune it. Um, this car does have a Blueprint Engines 427. Actually, let's just open the hood so we can take a closer peek. Okay, so this has a Blueprint 427 and all Fitech uh, fuel injection, their Ultimate LS kit. Um, so Jeremy is going to put a tune on this thing, get it running a little better. Um, we had it running a little rich. He pretty much, he's the wizard, so he figured most of that out right off the bat. Uh, simple mistake that I made, but he's going to get it really dialed in. So walk us through a little bit about what you're going to do to it and look at things to look at. So first thing I noticed, uh, it doesn't have our map sensor or injectors. So I had to set that up correctly in the handheld. It's got our throttle body and our harness, and it's got a force fuel in back. So everything should be good as far as fuel electronics and uh, everything else but I just did a quick setup on that set the handheld up for it to be a supercharger handheld and uh, it ran great after that so I'm gonna pull it on the dyno we got to take it easy still it's got a new clutch but uh, I'll, I'll be able to get some partial numbers out of the yeah. thing but I don't want to smoke the clutch right away right so. not right away we'll wait till we're at the track for that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> just kidding all right let's get it uh strapped on and uh, cool. get some tuning done on it let's do it
as you can see, this is a complete labor of love. We started with a really cool car. Esparza and his team put in two full years of work that you guys have just seen to bring this incredible drivable work of art to you. Craziest part of all, you guys can win this car at RestoMods.com. This is RM22, our 22nd giveaway vehicle. We're already working on the next 10 of them, but this one right here could be yours or $100,000 in cash. So claim those entries at RestoMods.com. Good luck. Thank <laughs> you.